Glory to the Lord God Almighty, the maker and the possessor of heaven and earth. I am David Ibonna, and this is David Ibonna Ministries. Today, we are going to have our communion and anointing service. In this service, we will have a short period of prayer. Thereafter, we will study the scriptures, and then we will take our communion. And I will be praying on your anointing oil with which you will anoint yourself. I encourage you to stay on till the end of this service. The teaching of today is on the topic, the times we live in, the times we live in, to understand what is happening around us and what is coming. And if you are watching me on my channel for the first time, or you haven't subscribed before, please do subscribe, click the subscribe button, click the notification uh, button just by that subscribe button. And that will make sure that when I post anything, you get notified. If you don't click on that bell notification icon, you may not be notified when I am, uh, when I upload anything. There are platforms that don't have the bell notification icon and it's automatic. So if you are on such a platform, no problem. You can find me David Igbona or David Igbona Ministries on locals.com, odc.com, Rition, um, Bitchute, Rumble, and uh, gab.com yeah we are just expanding to different platforms so you can even check the platform you are watching if we have gotten there at that time and feel free to upload this video to your own channel if you are someone who has a channel on facebook or youtube or any social media platform feel free upload this video let the word of god go forth and people be saved so let's begin by giving God thanks today for what he has done in our lives. The Bible says we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give him thanks for what he has done. For his goodness and for his wonderful works. The Lord has spared your life. He has kept you even up till now. He has protected you. Give him thanks for what he has done. Oh Lord, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Father, for what you are doing in our lives. We thank you. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We praise you, Lord. You are worthy to be adored. All the praise belong to you. Faithful God, we give you thanks. You have spared us. You have kept us from evil. You have kept us from destruction. We thank you, Father, for your kindness towards us. Thank you for your mercy in my life, Lord. Your mercy in my family. Your mercy in my ministry. Our, our, our businesses, our properties, you have kept safe. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your hand upon us in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to thank you, Lord, for the times that uh, certain things have happened in your life that have uh, almost taken you out of the faith and yet you remain in the faith. I want you to thank the Lord for that. Thank Him for that. Give Him thanks. Thank Him. For the times you almost made costly mistakes and he intervened. God intervened to stop you from making a costly mistake. And some of you have made such terrible mistakes and God brought you out. He spared you from the horrible consequences of your error. I want you to thank him for that. Thank him. Thank him. 
give him praise. Thank him for the answers to the prayers that you have prayed, whether you have seen them or not. Thank him that you know he has answered. Thank him that you know he has answered. You know he has answered. Give him thanks. Thank him. For you know he has answered your prayer. Now I want you to ask the Lord to cleanse you of any form of bitterness and unforgiveness. If there is someone you haven't forgiven, forgive that person now. Do not forgive because they apologize. Forgive because it is your nature as a believer to forgive. Do not forgive because someone has admitted fault. Don't wait till that time. Forgive because God has commanded you to forgive. And if you do not forgive, the Bible says God will not forgive you. The forgiveness of God is worth letting go of any uh, grievance towards anyone. Ask the Lord to remove bitterness from your heart. If there is bitterness there, confess your sins. Ask Him for mercy and ask Him to help you that you do not commit such sins anymore, that you do not sin anymore. Father, have mercy on us. Take away bitterness, unforgiveness from our hearts. Show us if there be any bitterness and unforgiveness. Show us, O oh Lord God, where the enemy has ground in our lives. Lord, show us, we pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Have mercy on us, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Give us the grace to live a life of holiness. A life that is without sin. A life that pleases you. Give us grace, O oh Lord, to walk in your ways. And to be faithful in all that we do. We thank you, Father. And we ask, Lord, that this service would be a success. In that your presence will be manifest wherever the service is participated in. We ask, Lord, that you will stretch forth your hand to save, to heal, and deliver, and that signs and wonders will be done in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that as many as are sick, they will receive their healing. Those that are bound will receive their deliverance. We pray, Lord God, that you open the hearts and the minds of the people to your word. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, I command every power attacking this service, every power resisting the word of God, going forth resisting this service and the blessings of it, to be destroyed right now in Jesus' mighty name. So, I'm going to begin teaching today. The times we live in, is, we call it the end times. This is the time that everything that has been sown into this world is going to be reaped. This is the time of harvest. You see, many times we hear the word harvest in preaching that it's they have the end is, is the time of harvest. And it doesn't dawn on us that that harvest is not just the harvest of good, it's also the harvest of evil. Everything that has been sown is going to be reaped in this time. And so we are going to see great revivals, great awakenings, and we are going to see an increase in wickedness, unimaginable wickedness and evil in this world. Why? Because it is the time of harvest. Everything that has been hidden is going to be brought to light. We are going to see human beings in their best form and human beings in their worst form. We are going to see the sons of God manifest. Now the Bible says the earnest expectation of all creatures is for the manifestation of the sons of God. We are going to see the manifestation of the sons of God. We are also going to see the manifestation of the sons of the evil one. 
we are going to see these things happen at the same time. And so, we should not faint when we see people acting in such an unrighteous manner. It is a time of harvest. We are in the last days. The love of many will wax cold. The Bible says in Matthew 24 that because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Waxing cold, that means love for human beings will be at an all-time low in, in many areas. At the same time, the love for human beings will be at an all-time high in many places. That is Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And that is why you see so much on eugenics. A lot of government policies are based on eugenics. Foreign policy based on eugenics, which is about um, harming, depopulating a particular race to enhance a, another race and depopulating a particular uh, set of people to enhance another set of people. So we are going to see a lot of wickedness on earth because we are in a time where the love of many shall wax cold. But our love as believers is to wax hotter and hotter. I want to read the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3. I want to read 2 Timothy chapter 3. from verse 13 to 14. 2 Timothy 3, 13 to 14. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse than worse square. Worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue in the things that you have learned and have been assured of knowing of whom you have learned them. So, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. They just keep getting worse. Now, notice something. They are deceiving people and they are being deceived. Sometimes you see um, governments and corporations when they issue statements and propaganda, it looks so ridiculous and you wonder, do these people actually believe the lies they are telling? Do they actually believe what they are telling people? But some of them do. Some of them are so deceived that they believe the lies. Some of them are so deluded that they actually see sense in the delusions that they live in. But on your part, you are to continue in the things that you have learned and have been assured of, knowing of whom you have learned it. The things in the scriptures, continue. Continue walking in them. Do not deviate because we are in the time that it is, is going to every strength you can gather is going to be useful. Every bit of strength. You need that. You need the anointing now more than ever. You need to get extra oil for your lamp. Because we are going into the midnight hour. The midnight hour is when you need that extra oil. And so, in these times, where iniquity shall abound, we as believers should stand our ground. Don't be carried away by the mainstream media and even some social media uh, platforms. There's a lot of deceit in the world. In fact, the mainstream media is just propaganda. It's propaganda. 
it is legal according to the defense national defense authorization act in the u.s it's legal for the government to use media for propaganda to spread propaganda it is legal in other words it's legal to lie to you if in the u.s because of their society it is you can find it as an open policy but well, many parts of the world, they don't need to put it as an open policy, but they just do it. They don't need to tell the people, they just do it. So, the media is being used to program you to be fearful, to be delusional, and to be wicked. To be fearful with all the talk of terrorism, war, threats, and all those nonsense make you fearful. To be delusional, they tell you that a boy is a girl, a girl is a boy. They tell you that there are, hundred, there are more than a hundred genders. The same people that say there are more than a hundred genders are the same people that will say they are appointing someone because the person is a woman. The same people that will say that they don't know what a woman is. So how do you appoint someone because she's a woman? We have delusions where a man gets up and says he identifies as a woman. He feels that he's a woman trapped in a man's body. And so he tells himself he's a woman and he wants people to call him as a, uh, a woman. That is, that is, it would have ordinarily been hilarious, but because of how real it is, it's sad. That we have men who are going around dressed like women and telling themselves they are women, wanting to bathe in the same bathrooms as women, compete in the same sports as women, is delusional. It's delusional to exalt a political entity over the bride of Christ. There is no, polit no political entity or nation on earth that is the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ is made up of people from every tribe, nation, and tongue that have given their life to Jesus Christ. They become the bride of Christ. But we have people that are trying to relieve the Old Testament, which has already been fulfilled, and form a political entity and exalt that political entity. Well, you see one simple thing you should know. Jesus Christ is married to the church. And the church is not people from any particular nation only, but people from every tribe, nation, and tongue. So, in the Old Testament, God had a covenant with a particular nation because of their fathers. A covenant to give them a physical land. And with the command that if they disobey him and live a dirty life, he, that land will reject them, which it did. In the Old Testament, they were that nation was married was like married to God by reason of covenant. In the New Testament, because that covenant was broken by that nation. It was necessary that a new covenant should come. That's why it's called a new covenant or new testament. And the new testament now, the new covenant is a covenant with people from every tribe, nation, and tongue who call upon the Lord with a sincere heart. They have become the bride of Christ. And so while God fulfilled his part, gave the physical land, the new covenant is about the spiritual land. Let's put it that way. The first, the Old Testament was about a physical land. 
the New Testament is about eternity. Not in this on this earth, but a new earth. A new earth. And so it's delusional to try to pursue the old in the new. Jesus said, new wine must be put in new wine skins or new bottles. So you can't put the new covenant in the Old Testament, Old Covenant uh, settings and expect to succeed. It will burst. That is why we are warned several times in Scripture to stick to the new covenant. But some people will want to end, want to follow the old, want to carry the Old Testament, put it in the New Testament, exalt a, a, a political entity, and then they miss the purpose of the New Covenant. I have to speak like this because social media now, if you use the names of certain nations and certain things, they are going to start, um, well, I say shadow banning. And so I have to speak like this. I hope you understand. Now, it, we, the media is also pushing wickedness. It's pushing wickedness. You see, we as believers, we are called to preach the gospel to every nation. But there are people that, as I said, that delusion of trying to take the Old Testament and apply it in the new. The Old Testament, a nation was for God. A particular nation in the Middle East was called God's people. And so every other person around was out outside the covenant and without hope. In the New Testament, we are to take the gospel to every tribe, nation, and tongue. But we are told to destroy certain nations, to celebrate the destruction of certain nations. People are told to pray for the destruction of Iran, the destruction of Syria. Oh, celebrate the destruction of Iraq. Oh, they are, they are enemies of God. Hate the Palestinians because they are Philistines. As long as you are listening to such false preachers who are preaching true hate, who are preaching falsehood, rather than seek the salvation of the people in those nations, you will be calling for the destruction of the people that Christ shed his blood for. That is how these, some of these Christ, so-called Christian uh, tele-evangelists teach wickedness. Teach wickedness. Do you know? Let me not go too far on this. But the judgment of God is not idle. It may be slow in coming, but it is going to be sure in its arrival. The media is teaching violence, teaching sexual immorality, which is wickedness. Because when you are a flesh, you are wicked to your body. And so what do we do? We should focus on the scriptures. What is written in the Old Testament is written as an example to us, to help us understand the New Testament. In the New Testament, we are supposed to preach the gospel to everyone and to love everyone irrespective of where they come from. And we are to value those of the household of faith first before those outside. If your Christianity is still based on the Old Testament, you know that there's a problem. And we are going to see a lot of confusion coming from that side, trying to attack the Christian uh, 
doctrine. So beware. The times we are living in, Satan is fighting from every angle. He's fighting from the angle of uh, false doctrine, fighting from the angle of love, of pleasure, and others. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, we see that the Antichrist is going to try to change times and laws. What that means is it's going to try to change history. History is going to be rewritten. Laws are going to be changed. You are going to be told good is evil, evil is good. He's going to try to take people away from the New Testament, take them to the Old Testament. Why is that? Because the Old Testament has been fulfilled. The purpose of establishing the descent, a part of the descendants of Abraham was to bring forth the Messiah and to show the love of God. And when the Messiah comes through that nation, he will draw all people from every tribe, nation, and tongue unto himself. We are going to see the Antichrist try to change things and make it look like we are living in Old Testament times. And that is the reason why many believers are going to be in Babylon, mystery Babylon. They are already in mystery Babylon. In the book of Revelations, God spoke to his people. He said, Come out of her, referring to mystery Babylon. Come out of her, so you don't become a partaker of her plagues and sins. How could God's people be in mystery Babylon, which is, which is riding on the Antichrist system? False doctrines. Mystery Babylon is known for harming believers. Mystery Babylon holds a cup full of the blood of the saints. Do you know how many people are calling for the destruction of certain nations on earth? Forgetting the history. People are calling for the destruction of Syria, hoping for the destruction of Damascus. Forgetting. Abraham was a Syrian. It's there in the Bible. Forgetting that Paul was traveling to Damascus to afflict and persecute Christians. So, before it came Paul. Because Syria was a stronghold for the believers in Christ. So when you see people calling for destruction of certain nations, it's ignorance and it's wickedness. And God will judge you as being part of the beast system. That's why I say, come out of her. So you don't become a partaker of her plagues and her sins. Brethren, we are in the end times. We have to be careful what we, we do. Look, let's read Daniel chapter 7 verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, referring to the Antichrist, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time, times, and the dividing of a time. So at the peak of the Antichrist in the last three and a half years, is going to be permitted to change laws, times, to change history. People would, would hear what was not as though it is history. But even before this last three and a half years, the Antichrist system is still seeking, is seeking to change laws and times. And that is why history is being rewritten. People are denying things that actually happened. Brethren, be careful. Be careful the, what you wish for. Be careful what you align yourself with. Soon, they will bring up the Noahide laws. And believers, some believers will be carried away thinking that they are exalting the God of the Old Testament until they realize that they are partaking in destruction. 
God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You must understand that the Old Testament has been fulfilled. It has been fulfilled. There was need for a New Testament because the Old Testament was actually to prepare the world for the New. The New Testament is the actual covenant of restoration and salvation. The Old Testament was to prepare. And that is why Moses told the people, he said, A prophet like unto me will the Lord raise from amongst you. Him shall you hear. And whoever will not hear him will be destroyed. He was speaking about Jesus Christ who will deliver us from spiritual captivity. Moses delivered his people from physical captivity. Jesus delivers us from spiritual captivity. And that's the goal. So brothers and sisters, yes, the times we are living in is tough. There's a lot of falsehood. There's a lot of crazies out there. Keep your mind with the word of God. Maintain course. Study the scriptures. Beware of any doctrine whose emphasis is almost exclusive to the Old Testament. Beware of such doctrines. Who's, uh, just beware of them. Be careful. Be careful. The Old Testament is written as lessons to us. The New Testament is written to us. Old Testament is written for us. The New Testament is written to us. So, follow the truth. In these times we are in, let your faith be anchored on Jesus Christ and Him alone. Let us pray. Father, the world is full of deception. But the light of your word pierces through every darkness. We ask, Lord, that the light of your word will pierce through every darkness around us. That we shall see clearly by your word. Help us, Lord, that we will walk in the newness of life, salvation in Jesus Christ. That we will not be brought under bondage. That we will not be deceived. into submitting to that which is not capable of giving life. Father, help us to walk in your ways. Give us understanding of your word. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you are there, you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, this is an opportunity to do so. I want you to pray with me. Repeat after me or use your own words. Lord God Almighty, I come to you today. I repent of my sins. I ask your forgiveness. I confess and accept Jesus Christ, your Son, as my Lord and Savior. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Write my name in your book of life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Keep me holy and righteous till the day I meet you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Pray that prayer you are born again. You are a child of God. I welcome you to the family of God and I encourage you to be baptized with water. Being dipped into water and brought out. And ask the Lord to baptize you in the Holy Spirit.
where you will have the gifts of the Spirit manifest. Now take your communion, your bread baked without yeast and your drink, fruit juice, not of olive wine. On the night he was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it after giving thanks and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. He took the cup, he gave thanks, blessed it and said, Take drink, this is my blood which is shed for the forgiveness of sin, the remission of sins in the New Testament. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. And so we proclaim that the Lord has done it. He has died and resurrected. We proclaim that we are saved. We are dependent in Him and we are one with Him. From every tribe, nation, and tongue. We just thank you, Father, for the bread and the drink. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for delivering us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for filling, for dwelling in us. And we pray that, Lord God, you turn this bread to the body of Jesus Christ in us and this drink to the blood of Jesus in us. We invoke the covenant, your covenant of mercy, the new covenant in the blood of Jesus. And we ask that whatsoever is not consistent, is not in agreement with the body and the blood of Jesus, that such will depart from us now, will be removed from us. Whatsoever is contrary to the covenant we have with you, sickness, disease, oppression, frustration, deception, Lord, we ask that such will be removed from our lives now in Jesus' name. And that everything that is consistent with, your, with the covenant we have with you, eternal life, faith, favor, prosperity, courage, health, Lord, and every other thing will be in our lives. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. So you break the bread. Then you take your oil. Your anointing oil. The Bible says, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. The Bible says, by reason of the anointing, the yoke is broken. Lift up your oil. Father, I thank you for every oil lifted unto you. I pray that your power come into this oil and, and flow through this oil. And that this ordinary oil shall become holy anointing oil from now on. I pray, Lord God, for every oil lifted unto you, that virtue will, will flow through this oil. That healing, deliverance, protection, promotion, favor, shall come upon everyone anointed and all that is theirs. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I receive it in Jesus' name. So you anoint yourself. You, pardon me, I, because I'm recording on social media, I have to be careful because we are being censored. Even my, my channels are being censored on various forms, some platforms anyway, not all. They are censored. It's Facebook, YouTube, very nasty censorship. You see, what the devil doesn't want you to know is called the truth. 
that the system hates the truth. And that is why when speaking, I couldn't mention certain names, but I just described them. And I hope you understand. We are in the end times. Deception is real. Deception is real. Father, I thank you for everyone who participated in this service. Lord, may the light of your word shine through every deception. Open their hearts and their minds to receive of your word. I pray, Lord God, that you stir in their heart the love of Christ. Love for people of every tribe, nation, and time. The love for them. The desire to see them saved. Lord, help us that we would not lose that love. And most of all, that our, we, our whole being will love you above all. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. You want to reach me, you can reach me by Telegram or WhatsApp. The number is plus two three four seven zero three 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 four three six eight by email David Ibona Ministries at gmail dot com. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Once again, the, the phone number is plus 234-7033-334368. And email is David Ibona Ministries at gmail.com. Ibona is spelled A-I-G-B-O-N-A. A-I-G-B-O-N-A. God bless you.